The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everyone. Well, we'd like to welcome you back to another KevCam Night class tonight. Tonight, I have Tim Carl helping out with any questions, concerns that come along the way. Tim, are you with us? I'm here. Perfect. Doing good. And, of course, can't forget Greg Payton. Make sure I'm uh, <laughs> staying on cue. Yep. Good evening, everybody. So uh, Greg is enjoying the beautiful Minnesota weather this week, and then next week he's putting on his uh, speedo and going down to Florida. So <laughs> that's service we offer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I see a lot of the regular names in here, so I won't go through any of the boring stuff. But we will get the ball rolling tonight with uh, my personal favorite is HSS morph between boundary curves. Now. For those of you guys that were with us last week, um, Greg had mentioned the idea of doing a embossed uh, coming out of a curved surface and stuff. So he actually sent that over and we're gonna show you a little bit of a repeat of parallel to a surface curve um, and kind of show you what we can achieve by doing that versus doing morph between boundary curve on this exact same part here. So first things first, Go ahead and open up HSS. We are gonna be doing parallel to surface. Now, our drive surface is gonna be this guy right here. Now, the real cool thing with this is, if we wanna have consistent tool path going all the way around this, um, I'll, and I'll show you the two different strategies that we have here, but uh, if we did morph between boundary curves, our step over is going to be real crunched together right here versus over here because it's trying to morph between two surfaces so it's trying to keep all the lines um, equal in there where right now if we do edge surface and we can just go on this bottom one right here and then we'll grab a tool And then we'll just do a quick save and calculate here. We can see that we are following the exact lines of this bottom geometry here. So we can see the curvature of this fillet right here following all the way through. So we're going to get a very equal surface finish going all the way through this entire part. Now, if we wanted to change it up a little bit, we could come over here and instead of grabbing that bottom surface, if we want to keep it parallel with our top surface here, we can do that as well. And now we have that nice equal going all the way through. So this is going to ensure a nice equal surface finish through the entire cut of this um, extruded surface that is going up all the way around here. So everyone see that? And obviously we got some links that we can clean up in here as well, but um, definitely just wanted to show that um, for you guys. So, uh, and then last thing what we always want to do is go to our toolpath parameters and let's set our tolerance or our, uh, max step over to something where we're going to get a really good surface finish on there. Okay. So that's one way of kind of going about it. Now. Um, like I said, this is my favorite toolpath, the HSS Morph Between Boundary Curves, and it works great on several different applications. Um, first thing I want to show you guys is doing a top radius. And we're going to keep using Greg's part here. And we will switch back over to Morph Between Two uh, Boundary Curves. And you guys will notice that I accidentally missed uh, perpendicular to curve, so that one actually got thrown back uh, in uh, two weeks. So we will be covering that. We're not skipping that one. All right, geometry. What surfaces do we want to cut? So let's just start off something simple up on top here, doing a nice chamfer. Start curve. Where do we want our tool path to start? So I'm going to tell it that I want it to start on this, the top here. And I want to morph the tool path down to this curve right here. All right, go ahead and grab a tool. And 
and save and calculate here. And now we are going and cleaning up that entire radius right there. Now, one of the things I really like with the morph between boundary curves is I can go to my sorting now, and you can see right now we're doing a zigzag. So as we're going around the part, doing going around, pick up, come down, and go around again. We can really clean up that path by coming over to spiral, and it will keep that ball end mill in constant contact with that material so we're not getting any witness marks there um, or anything like that. So now you can see we're starting at the top and doing a spiral finish working our way all the way around. So now we go to our toolpath parameter, tighten up our uh, step over. And we'll get a nice, real clean tool path going, doing this radius. And I wanted to pick up this radius because I feel uh, when we get tech support calls, this comes up quite often um, doing a chamfer up on top of there. Now, especially on a 3D surface. So we can't take a chamfer tool and go around here. So this gives you the ability to just take any ball end mill and zip around there a few times and getting that surface finish that you guys are trying to achieve there so now kevin for yeah. this particular feature would you be able to use the parallel of the curves yeah you probably could because our upper curve and our lower curve are very similar just a little bit bigger so yeah you probably get if we switch over probably get the exact same tool path but I have been surprised before we're getting a little bit of jumping up and down on that start so let's try grabbing this upper curve right here so what that is telling me since we are getting some jumping up and down and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this, um, what we thought would be the exact same curve, this one right here, as, let me turn off my toolpath here, is this curve right here are different. Um, so it's just not this curve right here expanded out. It is actually different, and we can kind of see that just because our toolpath is now jumping up and down, trying to stay parallel to this upper curve where now we switch over to morph between boundary curves. Start. End. So this is pretty good at showing that even though we tend to assume that a radius is gonna be a direct offset, when you're dealing with this organic geometry, that's not always the case. So there's a lot of tools in the solid cam toolbox to achieve the clean results that Kevin's showing here. Yeah. You knew that was gonna show off, wasn't it, didn't you? I made the part. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things in here. <laughs> a lot of madness, but there's some method to it sometimes. <laughs> okay. Let's make a copy of what we just did, and let's show you guys the difference between uh, morph between boundary curves when we do this entire surface here. So, whoop, got ahead of myself. So I just made a copy of what we did just for the upper radius here, and I'm gonna grab these surfaces here. And our start curve on this one, oh, this actually start curve is still gonna be the same, but the end curve is now gonna be this guy right here. And then what we'll do is I'll show you the difference between parallel to a surface versus morph between boundary curves on this surface here. 
So I think we had, we'll put this back at 50 thou. All right, so we'll turn that tool path off. Let's get a good side comparison. So what we're doing is we're running that tool path, starting with this edge curve down here, morphing its way down to this curve right here. Now, if we turn that off and do our parallel to surface, you can see that we're parallel to the top surface over here. So you can kind of see the, the difference of what's going on here. Our lines are straight right here versus our lines are following the physical ge the shape of our curve or our, uh, our curve that we selected. So hopefully that helps out um, some of you guys, help you understand some of it. And I definitely got some more examples for you. But any questions on this one here? Now, kind of show you guys the difference between a parallel to a curve and a morph between boundary curves. So we've got two example parts here. So on our left, we're gonna do our parallel to curve. So geometry, drive, Yep. And on this particular one, we'll just go that curve. And we'll grab our tool. This will really show you guys the power of uh, the morph. And we should be good. Okay, so parallel of the curve. It is keeping the par the tool path completely parallel to this curve over here. So this curve is going to look beautiful over here, but as we start coming over on this side, we're not going to look as good. So now, let's show the difference here. And we'll do morph between boundary curves. Geometry. And we want to start the same side. And we want it to morph over to the side right here. There we go. So let's do a top-down view here. So parallel the curve, and it's doing exactly what we told it. It's keeping parallel to that edge curve that we selected there. But as we start getting towards the center here, our surface is going to change up a little bit, where with the morph between boundary curve is it's taking everything from this side and then right through the center, we're almost getting straight lines, and then it's starting to morph back over to this left side over here. So, and we could change up our parallel to curve. Maybe we wanted, um, for some reason, um, you wanted to use that one. We can just grab, I can see through it here. Oh, it must have a, a gap. Yep. So what you think is going to be a straight line? Think again. All right. 
So now we have some pretty straight lines going in there. And this could be another approach to kind of uh, come along this geometry right here. Um, but it, it all depends on what kind of tool path that you guys are trying to achieve there, what kind of surface finish and so on and so forth there. So yeah, and for anybody who's uh, been watching the night class, would uh, probably opt to use HSS linear to achieve a cut along a straight line. Well, let's do it. So yeah, yeah. Go linear, and we'll put this at ninety degrees. Well, that was a lot easier than clicking all the lines. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, now, now you know I've been watching the night class. Yeah. Come on, Tim, you were supposed to pick up on that one. <laughs> Sorry. Now, one thing I would like for you to show, Kevin, now that we're kind of doing this comparison against uh, the tool paths of previous night classes and the different scenarios in which they're effective. Um, leave the morph between boundary curves the way it is okay but let's do a constant z on the parallel of the curve side because constant z is going to give us something that is similar in look to the parallel of the curves but i want to show um where some of the shortcomings are for this particular uh, geometry so Do you want the uh, tool path to be going in the same? Well, yeah, you can kind of see some of the short plumbing's right there. Let's actually let's clean this path up a little bit. So let's go over here. Let's put a link, link between slices. We'll do a blend spline. And we may have to look at it from the front. Because ultimately what we're going to see is that the morph between boundary curves is going to follow the flow of that surface as it drops along the z-axis. Whereas the constant z is just going to be at those particular z levels. So there we go. So see how it's traveling along the z-axis on the morph between curves? Yep. Uh, we kind of have to stand on the ceiling to uh, get a good appreciation <laughs> for it. Let me uh, let me just do this. So if you guys want, if you ever run across this, and like I, I told it, I want to do a normal two. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, what you guys can do is if you're trying to get a normal two of this view and it flips upside down, what you guys can do is hold your uh, control key and click the two surfaces and then hit your space bar and just hit the normal two button and it will normal to itself to that area right there. So, okay. So, yep, we got morph between boundary curves coming through here versus retch going side to side here. It, it kind of looks like it's side to side, but it's just but taking it as vertical slices yep. along the Z axis. Yep. So you don't get that nice clean flow um down that angled surface so you, if it was a top-down perspective you kind of get a look like it's similar um but you get just a much better uh flow along the surface if you use the morph between boundary curves yep and one thing the, that you will notice with morph between boundary curves is in this uh where it necks down right here you're going to have a little bit better of a surface finish right here versus over here and that's just because when it's when it's taking the toolpath and morphing its way over, it has to add all these smaller steps in here um, so it can fit the, the morph area in here. So like I said, you will get a little bit better surface finish right here versus down over here. And in here, um, I can remember seeing it in, so we're telling it to do an approximate step over a 50 thou, but if we tell it to do an exact, 50 thou. Now we should be seeing, well, it's still going to have to morph it in there. It's going to be a lot closer than what we were seeing before. So with our 50 thou. So you guys do have the option to do approximate as well as exact of a 
step over um, or a scallop in there. All right, any questions on this one or any other ones we can add to our uh, comparison here, Greg? Um, I can, but it's going to involve a lot of sketching. <laughs> well, maybe we'll we'll uh, prep that one for, uh, for another night. The, the next night. <laughs> we don't want to be putting uh, all our uh, attendees on uh, sleep mode. All right. So, uh, it's recent here. I did have one more I'm trying to find here. Is this guy here? Yeah. So here's another <clears throat> uh, scenario. We have a um, extruded uh, surface coming out. Our top surface is nice, perfectly round, but our bottom surface is has a uh, slope down. So. We'll kind of sh show two different scenarios right here. We'll start off with our morph between boundary curves. And we would like it to start up on top. Morph down to the bottom. Arrow direction does not matter. And once we're doing morph between boundary curves, like I said, we can switch it from zigzag over to spiral. Save and calculate. Okay. So now <clears throat> we're starting on the top and doing a nice spiral working its way down following that tool path. Now, if we get a side view of this, we can see that our tool path is 100% parallel to that top line. But as we start getting further down into the bottom, our tool path starts slowly working its way to follow this draft down here, this uh, angle down here. So, you know, a real cool, uh, scenario, real cool tool path, I think. Um, but let's see what it looks like if we were just to do maybe a constant Z. Because this is more of a constant Z tool path. Boy, I love having a fast computer again. Or a normal computer, I should say. <laughs> and we'll do the same thing here. We'll do a spiral. So this is what we we kind of run into here. Let's get back to here. We're achieving that same tool path as what we had with morph between boundary curves, but when we get to that constant Z we're gonna be hitting into our other surface that is over here. So at this point, we would actually have to set up a check surface in there to tell it not to touch the surface right here. And we're not gonna get that nice, uh, that nice surface finish on this bottom chamfer right here. Now we can definitely uh, tighten up our step over to achieve that, but there's gonna be a little bit more finessing that we have to do in there versus we do the morph between boundary curves, we're achieving that nice blend radius going all the way through. Now, we can also try out our uh, parallel to curves or parallel to surface. And I 
And now you can see we'll get that real nice surface blend down here on that chamfer, but up on top, we're not getting um, as nice of a surface finish as we would like to achieve right there. So that's why there's so many different options inside of HSS to really custom tailor these tool paths um, to what you guys are trying to achieve to get that, that ultimate surface finish there. So any questions from anyone? Nothing coming through? Nothing coming through. Man, all right. You did such a great job. You answered all the questions for us. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, let, let's see what Greg has. He's got to have something up his sleeve. Um, Other than I throwing do, a billion but, sketches on there. Yeah, um, earlier you were talking about it didn't matter the directionality of the chain when you're morphing between two boundary curves. Mm -hmm. Now, I've always been in the habit of making sure that each chain was going in a similar direction. Well, let's do it. So we are going clockwise there and counterclockwise there. So let's do edit and we'll reverse. So we're both going clockwise now. I think that's same. Well, let's just do this. All right, so this one we'll rename. Since I can find the rename button. Clockwise. And then when we're done with this one, I'd like to revisit the V shaped channels. And there. do new here and reverse. So we're going counterclockwise. Okay. So if we have one that is going, both chains are going clockwise versus one chain going clockwise, one going counterclockwise. On this particular application, it does not matter. Are we seeing in green there, Greg? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My concern is, well, I, I don't know in particular, but my concern is that with circular geometry, your starting endpoints are going to be the same sure. in a loop. So, let's so what happens when uh, the starting endpoints are different? Yep. All right. So that one's going down. That one's going down. So let's put this one as down. And let's go ahead. I'm actually going to turn this back to approximate. So we can see the toolpath lines a little bit better. Now, go ahead and make a copy. And do new. This one will go up. So now, looks like we, oh, so basically, what I can tell here, let me turn off this one. This one would be up and down. So if we're do one down, one up, so we're starting over here because we told that, well, actually it's the reverse of what we, um, the arrow direction. So we, we're told that we're going down. So tool path starts here and works its way over to this way. And then this tool path is up. So we are exiting towards the top side versus if we do both down, we are exiting right where we started. Now, 
out of curiosity, let's do up. Oh, that one should be still up. Oh. So you do get a couple different results there. Um, if we have both our lines going down, it is starting um, down in the front. If we have one going down and one going up, um, the start is still at the same spot, but the end is in a different location. Or if we both go up, we get the same results that way. So. Um, yeah, you're still going to get the toolpath morphing between both curves. There's just going to be a slight variance depending on chain direction yep. of entry and exit. And I got to apologize, guys, because I'm so used to doing, you know, using morph between boundary curves to do a chamfer around the top side of a part. So I'm used to the arrow direction not mattering. But in a case like this one, where we have kind of open edges on the front, open edges on the back, um, not doing a continuous loop around um, is where your cut direction or your uh, um, edge curve direction will matter depending on how you want your uh, path to look there. What else do we got, Greg? No, I think that's it for me. All right. Any questions from anyone? I think, uh, I think uh, everybody knows these classes are definitely dedicated to you guys. So if you guys do have a question um, or if you want to pull a Greg Payton and try to stump me, definitely ask away right now. Um, but uh, otherwise, we'll wrap up the class with that, uh, with more between boundary curves. Now, um, as an update, we did have to push this class back um, just because next week Greg's in Florida and I will be in Chicago doing it um, on site there. So. Um, and then have travel the week after that as well. So good opportunity if you guys uh, would like to see us on site, uh, just let your account manager know and we can come in there and between Greg, myself, uh, Scott, Ken, Eric, uh, we'll, we'll whip those machines up like uh, you've never seen before, right, Greg? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's sick of traveling. No. <laughs> but. Uh, all right, with that being said, I'll stop rambling here and uh, just want to thank everyone for uh, attending the night class tonight. Hopefully got something out of it. Um, I have been, uh, some people have been requesting the parts. So if you guys want these part files, uh, I would gladly send them to you. Just tell me um, which parts you'd like and I will zip them up and send them over to you. Um, and then we will talk to you guys in two weeks for yep. the perpendicular. Yeah. Uh, you want to go over uh, where they can find uh your email address like well, in the uh, description of youtube videos absolutely so in the uh, we'll just bring up our last night class here pause it come down here make sure you hit the show more um and here is my email address right here so uh, everybody that's watching on youtube um is where my email address every single one of our videos has um this exact same title or uh this text here so if you guys do have questions, send those over to me via email or uh, give us a call on the support line and we will uh, gladly help you out. But with that being said, we'll let you guys run. Thanks again for attending the night class and we will talk to you guys in two weeks. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.